Now, one of my dream watches is a CWC G10. Now, even more of a dream would be to get one that's actually been in service or was a military issued piece. So what did I do? Went on eBay, spent £140, well I bid on it, uh, won one from 1989. It's not a relevant year to me because I was born in 82 but couldn't find one at that that wasn't working. I wanted to buy one that wasn't working so I could buy all the other bits, which I've never done this before. Uh, hopefully they'll all fit. I have no idea how good the watch is because there could be bits missing, it could be totally knackered. Let's see how it goes. So watch the rest of this video. It's 15 minutes but it's effectively every single little step of what I did to take something that was eBay junk to possibly eBay treasure. So check out this vid, hope you enjoy. Let's get on with it. So what we've got here is CWC G10 1989. This is from the Royal Navy, this one, all the codes and that can signify where it was issued to. And yes, this has seen some service, it seems. It's got a bit of wear and tear here and there, but this is a bit of a restoration project because the movement isn't working in here. I've already done an exploration inside so I can find the bits I need to buy so I can do a full restoration service on this. And I've already removed, oh, there was some fluff under the uh, crystal here and there was lots of scratches on the crystal, but I've basically spent an hour, to save you the boredom of seeing it, use Polywatch to restore it almost back to new again. It looks fantastic. Really nice, only a few tiny little imperfections in it, maybe a bit around here, but it's a struggle to pick it up on camera. So as you can see, the case is a bit battered here and there, but not too bad. The camera picks it up a bit more, but I like that's the, what you're paying for. You're having something that's got a bit of history to it. So you normally change the battery bar on doing this hatch, but I need to show you, obviously I'm changing the movement. The main issue with this is that movement isn't working. So the way you can open the back up is pretty straightforward. So I put it in this just to make life a bit easier when holding it. Use one of these and you carefully pop it in the side. Here's a bit of a slot. This is sort of groove all the way around. So I get it in there, wiggle it in, and then tip it upwards. So once you've got it in and given a bit of a leverage and pop, it literally frees it off from the case back. And that was a bit tricky and normal because there's no gaskets in here because I need to do a full gasket service on this. And what also was discovered when I opened this up, apart from that bit in the middle of that being missing, it looked like it had some decay or crustiness from the old battery it used to have in there and um, also is missing the screws that hold the movement to this movement ring so it's just moving about in there so that is something i've ordered as well so we can have new screws in there so the next bit i need to do is take this crown out so i just use a little pin and there's a little tab hole there not a hole it's like a little thing button you press on that and at the same time you can pull out the crown, it's easy as that. So I can just take it out of this, which has been very helpful, and then I'll place it onto here. Easy as that. So now I need to just line these hands up and take them off because I need to take the dial off as well. So I'll put the crown back in, well, at 12 o'clock that'll do. Then I'm gonna put this in a movement holder so it's a bit easier to fiddle about with. So that's a bit easier to work on. Now I'm just going to leave the hands off, but I'm going to protect the dial as I do that. So I protect it, it's a piece of plastic. Just gently lay that over the top. And then this is a hand puller. So I'm going to line it up so I can reach either side. I'm going to use these instead. It's a bit easier for me. Get these underneath the hands and then a bit of leverage equally together and they should all just gently pop off together, which they have, very good, happy days. Now I need to get this dial off the old movement. We do that is you flip this over and you see under here there's these little levers so i push them in let's use a little screwdriver that pops over do the same the other side so hopefully that should just pull off now which it does very gingerly there we are and that's the old movement as you see it looks like there's some residue in there there's a bit of leakage here's the dial what i'm going to do before i put this all back together i've got some matte black paint coming i'm going to touch up these little edges which have obviously been scraped from that loose movement ring this is the movement i prepared earlier so this is the new movement i don't need this date wheel so i've looked up online how to take this out and it looks pretty straightforward so all i'm going to do is get my little screwdriver set i recommend good screwdrivers again it makes a hell of a difference for ease of doing these kind of fiddly little jobs so there's a little screw here which i'll undo and then that is what I have to then take this little plate off and then I can use my tweezers to take off this date wheel. So I'm using my one mil screwdriver to undo that one tiny little screw.
Should be able to lift the date wheel off now. We get rid of this little tiny cog here. Just the one click now. One in and out. And that's all we've got to do. And I'll put that plate back on the top. And that's the preparation done for the movement. Now this is ready to have the new dial put back on. But that's not until we have put on this cog which comes in the middle here. Blooming nightmare, I actually lost a tiny cog that was just underneath here. Uh, I found it, luckily, put it back in and everything's working again. Because what would happen is I pulled it out to time adjust and none of these cogs would turn. I was like, oh my god, something's wrong. I solved the problem. But that's just an example of the kind of stuff that can go wrong. So I've made sure I've put this center cog on here. That turns when I pull this out and I start to turn it. I can see that turning. That's good. So now it's time to put the dial on. So sticking out nicely, ready to accommodate the dial back on. So I can do that whilst I'm holding it here. Place it on there. As you can see it lines up. So I've got my gloves on so it doesn't have to worry about anything too much. I'll be just wary of this part here. Then I'm going to push these back in. Fucking lights died. Right, time to get these hands on. I'll try at least. I'm having a bad day. Well, I'm still giving it a go. Got my hands here, hopefully okay. I'm using my Rodico to pick them up. Let's start with the hour hand. Let's line it up and I'll stick it at the 12 o'clock. Hopefully, don't destroy anything. Nope, just gonna drop it instead. Line that up to 12. Use the hand pusher to push it. So on. now I'm going to use the crown to wind it around to six o'clock and put the minute hand on. Again, line it up. Or oh, it jumps off. Fucking thing. Then use the pressure again. Small ahead this time. Should be okay. Let's check it. That's seven. Nine, yep, all lines up very good. Now the tricky one is this blooming seconds hand. Let's see if this has worked first time. I think it's worked. Now I don't know if this battery I've got is any good, so I'm gonna put one in. Pretty sure it's a new one, see if it works. It works. Oh, happy days. It's not lining up absolutely perfectly on the markers, but you know what? This is a rebuilt watch, I'm happy with that. Please forgive this terrible mod video. It, I'm obviously very rusty. So if things look a bit squiffy throughout this video, I hope the information is still good and useful and the final outcome is gonna be useful and interesting because as you can see, it's still ticking away and working. Yesterday's uh, recording sesh, I did everything up to now. Now what's arrived in today's post is a matte black paint. Now what's that for? Well, as you can see, this is just me thinking to be creative to solve this problem. You see here on the edges of the dial, where the previous owner had the movement loose in there and the watch was moving around because it didn't get screw attached to the movement ring holder, it would have been rattling around in there when stuff was being messed about with in its 33 year history. And that sort of knocked about and chipped the edges of the uh, dial paint off. So what I need to do is basically see if I can just take your eye off it. I'm not gonna make it like factory fresh or anything. I'm just gonna touch that in with some matte black paint. And hopefully when it dries, it'll look close enough and at least your eye isn't drawn to it. So let's do that. This paint, is meant for touching up matte black alloy wheels, apparently. And it comes with a tiny little applicator. I'm <laughs> shaking it up and it's just oozing out. So uh, I wanna make sure it stops oozing, but it's got a very fine applicator tip. And that's what I'm gonna use to very, very carefully color in those chip bits on the edge of the dial. So I don't know why this is leaking so much. Okay, the other technique I'm gonna try is use my very sharp stick I've sharpened, dip the stick in paint which is obviously I've had no trouble getting it out of the tube because it's oozing out and I've left a blob here and I'm using like an ink pen I'm just going to gently very closely and carefully apply the black paint exactly where I want it I think I sussed a slightly better technique for applying the paint so I've got a blob of paint on my tissue next to me and then used the top of a q-tip slash cotton bud loaded it up with paint and said it had sort of, it was like a mini paintbrush but then it seems to apply it almost like a paint roller, so it's flatter and smoother. Whereas when I was dabbing it with the stick, 
it was just going on a bit too thick. So I could just dab it with this and really gently layer it and then let it dry and then just keep applying until it had a slightly smoother finish. Now I'm happy with the coverage of that. I'm just going to leave it to dry now and hopefully it will set and look close enough in matte finish to that because it's right on the edge and you only just about see it when it's in the case. I'm not too bothered. It's just to take your eye off it. That's the priority. So this is it. This is day three, I think, now of this mod build, if you will, because I've been waiting for bits to arrive. And then as soon as they arrive, I come in and film a bit. So the first bit was sorting the movement out. And then it was, in the meantime, waiting for other bits to arrive. It's polishing the crystal and cleaning the case up a bit. And now we are at a stage where I've got the last few bits to get this all put together. Now, what arrived today, which I've already just quickly screwed in, are these two movement holder screws, which were missing when I bought this watch. So that's brilliant. And it holds perfectly. Bit of luck, I just ordered these because it said it fits ETA movements. Didn't say which ones, I just thought, you know what's worth a punt for a few quid, I think it's about £3.95, which is a lot for two tiny screws, but you know what? They work, they fit, that's all I needed. So I'm happy with that. Last so. two bits really, or three or four bits really, because there's always a few snags I've got to sort out. The original crown, it's hard to just get new crowns. It's easier if you want to service this watch, not replace a whole new crown. It's actually to put a new rubber gasket in there, a little tiny little seal in there. Now. It's hard to pick out on the camera, but I did pick out the old one. I used a sewing needle, put it in there, raked around and sort of jiggled and poked it and then it just popped out. So that's how I got the old one out. It was fiddly, but the technique is for anyone who wants to do this themselves, use a needle and you can get it in there and just, just pop it out. Here's a new one, same supplier uh, for the other gaskets which I bought and the other ones I put in fit perfectly. Now there was one that goes in here. This is the case back. Now this fits perfectly. I pre-lubricated it by popping it in this pad here, you place it on there, shut the lid and give it a few twists, it gives it a good cleaning and a lubrication. And then I did the same for the battery hatch, which again, when I took all these bits apart, they were all fully caked in grime and gunk and dirt. And the gasket that was in there was jammed up in here. It was all a mess. So it's nice to put fresh and new for everything. And that's, what we're going to do now, the last few, because I've got all the bits now. So I think I'll start with the fiddly one and see how that goes. I'll try and twizzle it. So now that has got a bit of a coating on there. Drop it over the crown and the stem. The way I sussed it was I effectively got one end poked in and stop it keep springing back out again as I would carefully hold down one side and push down the other just to feed it in. So let's put this back in the watch. It's got a little bit of resistance now as it's got a brand new seal in there, but that's it, pushes in and out. Now it's gonna get this movement ring in here. Same story, put it in there and then place it where it needs to go on here. This is the fun bit, the last bit, well, there's two more jobs and <laughs> get carried away too much, but I've got this set up ready. This is a crystal press, but it's also good for pushing snapback case backs back on. So all I've got to do is find the right dies, which I've done already, and then I'll put it in. So, so I don't scratch up the acrylic, which is obviously very easy. I'm going to put a bit of cloth here underneath, make sure I've got my case back ready. And remember the battery is obviously there. Then the arrow of the broad arrow, it lines up with a little notch there and that lines up with the crown. So I'll place that there ready. Now it's just a case of pressing. Give it a few twists just to make sure it's seated fully. Yep, even seating all around. And I've got one last job to do. Actually, before that, I'm gonna set the time. It's gotta be done, hasn't it? It is 6.16, so let's go back to 6.16. That's it, perfect. And that is this. Not from me, I don't sell these ones because look, this is bought directly from CWC. It's the correct width, it's 19 mil. That's the slightly awkward size this is in, but this is the genuine issue that they do for these watches. So it's appropriate to put it on this. And because this has fixed lugs, that's all you're limited to. So let's feed it in. I'm so excited. You're going to get to see my genuine first reaction to my completed project. This is so exciting. Oh, it's been a tricky one, I must say. But it's worked out in the end. Let's look at that, guys. I'm so proud. 
just shows if you're just willing to give something a go and put up with things being a bit of a nightmare sometimes, you can build your dream watch from bits. And this has cost me less than 200 pounds. I know you can probably buy these for a little bit more on eBay working, but you know what? I have got the pride of saying I've restored this. I know this watch inside out. It's got brand new appropriate movement from ETA and it's got all new seals and gaskets and it's all been cleaned up nicely. I've put a lot of hours into this and research. So let's get this on wrist and you get to see it the first time working and completed on one happy owner. I can't even describe how pumped I am at the, how well this is gone. Oh, even the strap has got the satin hardware to match the satin case. And this is a proper military issued watch from 1989, 33 years old, with a brand new movement, ticking along nicely. And I fixed it, I've restored it. And I've never fixed a quartz before. I put a new quartz in and got it working in a watch which I've always wanted. I'm so proud. What do you guys think? I really hope you've enjoyed this video too. It's a bit, bit of a hash together job, but I'm a bit rusty, but you know what? Even rusty, you can persevere and get it done. And here we go. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Bye for now.